Welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa, where transformation begins as we evoke, embrace, and evolve. Greetings, 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 and welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays. It's so good to be here with you, isn't it? Well, I understand where you are coming from with all the chaos happening in the world. Um, everything happening in Israel, everything happening in Afghanistan, the war in Israel, uh, there is the war and everything happening in Armenia, Artsakh, and also the unfortunate uh, earthquake that happened in Afghanistan uh, that over 2,500 people have died. So when we think about it, there is so much chaos and doubt and misfortune happening and with all that there's people who are making love having babies getting married and saying yes to life and living yes we can always be prayerful and thoughtful of all that there is happening and the self-doubt that happens within ourselves that I'm not doing enough or I am wrong or I didn't deliver last week. It's already been a week I had an event. After the event, I was thinking to myself, oh my God, I didn't do this, do this, do this. This went wrong, that went wrong. So when we come to think of it, we can always find a fault. We can always see the negativity. Actually, there are the three principles in life. And the principles are of the mind, the consciousness, and thought. That is the principle of life. In a way, it's my evoke, embrace, evolve. Because the mind in itself is the function the the reality of it that's what we need in order for everything to happen the consciousness is being aware of what is happening in the world what is happening around you what is happening within you that's being conscious and the thought process is all the thoughts ideas imagination creation everything that comes within this so the three principles of the entire life and being is that and as i was thinking about all this and talking about it i thought of something you know in the work that i do and uh as a clinical hypnotherapist and being working with my clients in managing stress and anxiety I was sitting and I'm like what would I be talking about today it's that self-doubt right and how do we debunk that and right just like the way I work with my clients in taking them into a state of remembering something where it stems from I remember this now imagine I'm about five years old um, I grew up in Iran so our home my parents are not home and at that time five years old my grandmother was like babysitting because they lived next door to us and grandma was chunky and so we're sitting watching TV and I remember this couch my parents had it was like a triangle it, it, it was pointed like this and like a triangle so the the this round moon shape was to the back on a like a triangle in the corner and the the pointy part was out so two people could just easily sit there and grandma was sitting in this beautiful triangle uh, moon shape chair couch we're watching TV and I was sitting next to her I don't know what happened I can't remember everything but all I can remember is I got up and for whatever reason grandma was sitting more on one side 
and this entire couch apparently it was not close to the wall it just flipped over and grandma hit her head to the wall the couch is open and all i could see this little girl all, she, all i could see is grandma's like up in the air and just going like this and she is like in pain it's like ow ow and all i could see this little girl is watching grandma her legs up her jammies jammed up on her tummy or something and <laughs> all i could do is laugh so as i am laughing as this little girl is laughing grandma is in pain and calling for help and I reached out but I was not strong enough to pull the couch down and I'm doing everything but I couldn't because she was heavy and this entire chair had flipped over I don't remember how we turned the chair the couch or grandpa came and helped that was not the point it's just for the longest time that little girl felt guilty for laughing and that I couldn't help so I felt helpless and I all I could remember afterwards was being scolded of either jumping out or not being able to help or laughing my all I could do was laugh and I know working with clients and seeing so many people when we get nervous when i don't know how you deal with it but there are so many people when they are nervous and they feel helpless they start laughing and giggling and of course when something is funny we also stop and laugh and we can't help it's just like it, it the whole thing it's not about you anymore it's about the laughter why am I bringing this up because that little incident that little guilt or of I couldn't help or I felt guilty it's those invisible um, unseen guilts and shames and self doubts that come to build up uh, within ourselves and we hold on to those now throughout the years I've realized the little girl didn't know any better but that indication and I don't know if you have felt it if you have by all means say yes or you it resonates with you do you giggle or do you go into this fight or flight do you when here's another one when we feel unheard and we want to say something and we think that the other person is not hearing us our voice gets loud when we are angry and we start the tone comes up and it's not that we are angry at that person there is an underlying unseen unmet anger and hurt inside that when something triggers it it all comes up so the laughter the giggles the loud speaking and thinking that I am not seen I am not heard and creates a self-doubt when it is not met how do we deal with this how do we share it how do we fix it you know debunking that self-doubt is the important step towards healing and building the confidence actually more than confidence that self-esteem knowing that no matter what happened 
you are valued, you are worthy. It was it was not my fault, even though I jumped off the couch and it was something funny and I laugh and grandma didn't laugh with me. Or when something triggers us, it boils up and to the level that the lid comes off and we get angry, right? So there are so many strategies to help you. But most importantly is recognizing that self-doubt is normal. It is. And we all experience it. We all experience it at some point in life. And it's a natural reaction to challenging times, challenging moments, or times of uncertainty which is happening around the world which is happening in our motherland uh, in our country so even in your house it can be happening in your house in your body it's the uncertainties if someone has given you an information a news that it was not expected so understanding all that and knowing that there is a way to deal with it and first and foremost is to identify the source and when I was doing my own if I can hypnotize myself and I have seven uh, root canals with no anesthesia and I was thinking how do I go and empower that little girl and make sure that she feels strong that it was not her fault that yes at that moment that scene called for laughter and it's okay to laugh and then once you overcome your shock you go and tend to the reality and some people still don't know how to deal with reality so challenge the negative thoughts is another one first is recognize it and then challenge was I really at fault no I was a little girl I I didn't know any better so it is not my fault you know in I know someone can say but whose fault is it when they do wrong I recognize that we have to point finger at someone someone has to be accountable but if we start with being accountable right here and take ownership and it starts from home so practice self-compassion just a little bit more kindness and when I started going down the road of oh my god the event was not right uh, when I was doing my checkpoints did I deliver and when I was looking at the videos I was so loud was I unkind at one point it feels like I am dictating instead of kindness and I was in tears because all I wanted to do was create a space of love and compassion in embracing and when that was not coming through I was so harsh with myself that all I did was beat myself up and that's why I remembered the little girl and grandma because for the longest time I beat myself up of why I got off the couch and why I couldn't help grandma and I was laughing and you know this is this is exactly how it happens something happens to you at that very moment and just like a boomerang takes you to another time and a place until you recognize oh this is where it stemmed from but did it did it stem from there or that you've been told don't be doing this because this is wrong that is wrong and this is bad and 
you know, the right and the wrong, the good and the bad, the black and the white. When a baby falls, they look up and then they get up and they go to their merry way. When they're laughing or even puppies, when they're playing, they have no understanding where they peeing or anything or a little kids when they're playing they put their hands in their mouth their toes in their mouth and they're so fragile and sweet and we allow them to just play and as we grow older that's where all the do this and do that the right and the wrong you have to be perfect you have to do this comes in and so when we do this and self-doubt kicks in negative thoughts and I'm not good enough I didn't do it enough I did it wrong comes in we don't give ourselves enough kindness and room for mistakes and that's where this self-preservation comes in that I can't do wrong because of expectations, because people are looking up to me, because whatever reason, right? And we forget the kindness. So, if you take a few moments and truly take few moments and just allow yourself with unconditional acceptance think of when you have been harsh on yourself harsh on your actions and reactions harsh on the things you thought you had to deliver and you had to be perfect and if you could, just for today, bring a touch of kindness and remember that your inner self, that could be a child, could be a teenager, even adult years, a touch of kindness when we expect someone to be kind to us. My question is, have you been kind to you? I'm emotional right now because all I can think about is we expect war to end. We expect this battle of countries to end. And one eggs another one. And the other one, it's all territorial. It's all this ego. And here, our own ego, our own self-expectations is the first one we have to acknowledge and understand. If there are three principles of our mind, of our consciousness, and our thoughts, how can we come to, yes, evoke this entire idea? Of this is what is happening this is the reality and embrace the reality with kindness this is where it happened and if I can be more loving to my reality of being harsh on myself becoming a parent you know should have could have would have to evolve with more love, with more genuineness, and have those realistic expectations met because you come to focus on your strengths. And if you have done wrong or you think it was wrong because even that is a title, you just be mindful, be prayerful. If you meditate, if you pray, if you just take a moment, just take a moment of self-reflection. 
that's it. Invalidate yourself instead of expecting others to validate you. That's the first rule. I, I always say self-acceptance, self-pride trumps everything, everything. When you are proud of yourself, you know, when you take a test and you ace the test or B the test, C the test, it doesn't matter the grade. When you pass the test, you are proud of yourself. And then it comes, it hits. I could have, should have done this better. I knew the answers. It doesn't matter. You passed it. It doesn't matter. Be proud, be happy, you pass the test. And if you feel anxiety, let, I can, I was going to say, let me help you because I can. If there are limitations and blocks and everything. And, you know, I just had a client come in for the same thing. That harsh, harsh um labels i should have could have would have so helping yourself take action and saying you know what okay now what and just for today add a sprinkle of kindness and that's what i did last night i added a sprinkle of kindness towards the little girl because it's not happening now. It was then. I, before anyone else could have scolded me, I scolded myself because, you know, that's called conditioning. When you walk on eggshells, that's called conditioning. It's like, but where does that conditioning come from? And those are the things I want you to realize. It's not a part of your behavior before it is a routine it's not a routine until it is a habit it's not a habit until there is a form of conditioning a pattern happening and those are the things that I work with my clients to debunk all that it's like unraveling so you can do this on your own today take a piece of paper if there is something that is sitting heavy on you on your heart on your body that you believe you can't see it. I'm here for you. But you can start writing. And when you start writing or thinking, it all comes to you. The same way as mine came all the way from my event to all the way to being a little girl at five years old. And it's just laughing and saying, oops, right? So we learn from our mistakes and we put a full stop. When you come to evoking it and come to embrace the reality and you say this is where the buck stops and if i have done this loop over and over over and over each time it becomes easier and faster for you to recognize it believe me it becomes faster and easier for you to recognize it and then you say ah, that's it you start visualizing this is where you come, you go from here to here. And now, in order for you to evolve, you start visualizing the success. What is it that you want? And that's when you take action. You visualize and you say, okay, this is what happened. This is where the buck stopped. And I'm done with this. Over. Now what? We learn from our mistakes. That's what learning is. So we're not repeating it anymore. And every time you become aware and you surround yourself with more genuine kindness towards yourself, you do debunk self-doubt. And... Uh, Overcoming self-doubt is truly a process. That's all. It's just an everyday process. 
you are so amazing this is exactly what i needed to hear well you are welcome because i needed to hear that and i had to go through my own self-kindness and love so i hope today's message was beneficial to you or someone you know needed to hear this so please share this if uh, you like the message like if you are viewing this on youtube please subscribe push the button subscribe it is with your subscription with your follow through that we're going to grow and i want to thank you for being part of heel talk tuesdays every year and next month there is an amazing thing that is going to happen and i can't wait to share it with you so until then god bless you and may the universal light surround you and all your loved ones in our country and around the world globally see you next month